Good evening YouTubers. Tonight I'm going to show you Selection Sort. Selection Sort is an attempt to improve over bubble sort in one respect which is the number of assignments. In bubble sort you notice that items would be shifted to the right as they are essentially the largest. A pairwise comparison was made at each stage and the largest item would be moved to the top uh, of the, or I should I say, uh, to the end of the array. And then we would uh, decrement uh, the amount of the uh, accessible array by one, and we'd end up with a subarray, and we'd continue on so until we ended up with a completely sorted list. Selection sort takes a different approach to try and reduce the number of assignments needed. With selection sort, we have a, an outer loop and we do have an inner loop, but uh, what I've attempted to do is uh, simplify the explanation, the graphical explanation, and uh, highlight the relevant inner loop section in the source code itself. So I'm going to first start off by explaining that the idea with selection sort is to take the subarray, in the initial condition the subarray will be the entire array, and look for the least or the lowest uh, figure, or the, the lowest of the items in the array. In this case we've got integers, so therefore it is 3. And 3 is not moved, so therefore I colour the background green. We then move to the second stage. And what happens is, is that we hold 3. This becomes, the highlighted section becomes the subarray and of course beforehand we have 55 and 7. Well, 7 is lower than 55 so the elements get swapped. And then we move on to the next. Now 3 and 7 are held in place and this highlighted section is now the new subarray. Since 35 is less than, uh, sorry, since 35 is greater than 9 35 and 9 get swapped. Then we have 3, 7 and 9 held in place and it goes on and on. As so we swap, as we find the smallest item in the subarray, we finally get to the last bit there and uh, we notice that we just swap the elements around and we end up with a sorted list. You notice that at each stage it's now the left hand side that gets increment, incremented as the amount of the array that gets held in place. And finally at the end selection sort ends with a sorted list. So you can see in this case uh, that uh, all we're going to have is uh, we're going to take We'll take the second example here, is that we would take the 55, or the 7 for that matter, put it in a temporary variable, and then swap the other one in its place. In this case, it'll be the 55 that's still he here, and the 7 that's over here, and the 7 makes its way into here, and we take the temporary variable and place it into there, since it's been copied over. Now, this reduces the number of assignments. I'll just explain something. In bubble sort, the number of key comparisons was n to the n minus 1 divided by 2. Basically, that is uh, O n squared in the big O uh, notation because it's of order n squared. And the item assignments. Uh, basically an n squared but uh, divided by 4 in this case. So you can see the relationship here. Selection sort has the, the na same number of key comparisons but the number of item assignments is uh, drastically fewer with uh, 3n minus 3 in this case. So um, that's with the, this is transposed so basically 3 bracket n minus 1 close bracket equals 3n minus 3. Um, so you can imagine that if you had a thousand elements, you'd end up with uh, 
and it's the worst case scenario and I should state, state that very clearly that uh, you might have no item assignments you might have uh, basically quite a number of uh, item assignments if you had like say a thousand well a thousand items that would be uh, 3000 minus 3 2997 uh, assignments it's still quite high the key comparisons are still quite high I suppose the n it's all relative really the number of item assignments is lower uh, by a significant margin uh, when you compare it to say uh, a list of 1000 items so what I'm going to do now is, uh, presuming that you understand uh, this material here, we can uh, progress on to the source code to explain it. So I'm just going to bring the source code in here. If you don't understand, uh, just take a time to pause and, and take a look, or perhaps even looking over the source code uh, might even help. So. I'm not going to explain this because I did that in my previous video, but we have here the prototype for the selection sort. Uh, it's going to return nothing, but it does have in it a, a uh, an array that of a type integer and a integer uh, here, which is going to be indicative of length of the array. Uh, we'll skip main for the time being because the real meat, uh, shall we say, in the sandwich is uh, here where we have the signature of the uh, selection sort. Uh, by the way, I should uh, stress that this is actually C++. There are, you know, as many languages as there are out there, there are a number of e efficient uh, implementations of selection sort. So take a look at your favorite language. Uh, mine happens to be at the moment C++. Uh, anyway, um, moving on, we have a uh, an integer for smallest and uh, basically that's the candidate smallest at each step of the way it's going to be the iteration we have here the temporary uh, variable uh, and the temporary variable is just for swapping out uh, the two uh, array elements when they need to be swapped out so as I said before um, uh, we do have a main loop it iterates until it gets to uh, length minus one uh, we don't want to go out of bounds on the array uh, so this is kind of important. Um, we go down here where I said before that uh, the smallest will be assumed uh, to be the first uh, item in the subarray. This ca in this case, uh, we'll start at zero. Um, zero having the value three. Um, and then what happens is um, we will then iterate uh, from the index being the item after all the way through to the end. Now, if uh, one of the items happens to be less uh, than the one indicated by the smallest being the first in the iteration of the subarray, then there'll be a change in which is the smallest. The smallest will now equal that new one, which is at sitting at index. Uh, in the case of three, there is no smaller than three and that's indicated here over here with the green just to say that it never got swapped in the next however we can see that 55 and 7 uh, well 55 is not the smallest, 7 is the next smallest out of the subarray after we've ventured to iteration equals 1 so therefore once we get to uh, where the 7, once we iterate through in this small inner loop to where the 7 lies, uh, the element where 7 lies, uh, which is the second last one in this case, um, being the um, uh, the eighth element, um, you know, starting from 0 up to 8, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you then see that they need to swap, and so therefore the smallest uh, becomes the index and then we go on to saying that the temp will take the value of the iteration that is the 55 sorry that's highlighting both it's because there's a no gap between the two um, this and then the iteration becomes the new smallest one which is seven and then uh, the position of smallest then takes on the value of the iteration which was uh, taken for temp 
and that would be 55 and they swap out as you can see here. Now that goes on until the iteration equals length minus 1. Again we don't want to go out of bounds and we have a zero um, anchored array. Uh, the elements start at zero, they're counted from zero. So um, the uh, in this case the ninth uh, the ninth element, um, which beginning from zero, is really in normal English parlance is the tenth uh, element. And uh, again, we could um, we continue on anyway. Uh, in this case, we can't early terminate because of no swap. Like I said before, there was no swap here, so there's no opportunity for early termination. We'd end up with an unsorted array. So just to repeat, here's the outer loop, which cycles through each of these and here is the inner loop which inspects the rest to try and find the smallest out of the subarray at each step. That basically explains uh, selection sort. I'm just going to close this window now and just explain to you again why the number of item assignments is less. When uh, I look at my textbook they don't explain this too well. I'm not going to incriminate the textbook, perhaps I will in a future video, but uh, I won't do that right now, but there are three parts to this. We have the temp, we have the candidate smallest, and then we have the identified smallest, essentially. So the temporary just being the, uh, the uh, the uh, item that takes, for example, the identified smallest and then there's the swap and then you place the value back back in like we saw in the source code before. Well, in this case, um, there are n-1 uh, inspections. Uh, well, there's the n to n-1 key comparisons, but in each case, uh, at each step of the way the number of uh, item assignments is three because we're going to place um, the variables that need to be swapped around into these here and what then happens is there are n minus one at each stage so essentially you get three times n minus one let me reiterate if I haven't explained that as carefully as I possibly could the number of key comparisons doesn't change but in each step you're going to have three every time there is a new assignment there are three assignments that need to be done every time there's a swap okay there are three things that need to be dealt with there and since um, since we, uh, you know, always looking at one element less, it's really n minus one, and so you get n minus one in brackets times three. So I suggest to you to create to understand this completely is to create a worst case scenario with a small number of elements, maybe five elements, and sit there and try and work out the number of changes that need to occur and then multiply that by 3 and you'll realize that it is indeed 3 bracket n minus 1. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please uh, like, subscribe and comment below. Um, up and coming will be insertion sort and then we can take a look at uh, binary searches which depend on sorted lists. Uh, they cannot work without sorted lists, which is why we're looking at sorted lists now. Uh, as I said, uh, I'm learning this as I, uh, as I video this, uh, I'm learning it as well. So it's usually like the day after when I've learned something and coded it up that I explain it. So you, you, know, you might see some slight errors in exp explanations. Again, uh, the value add in that is please put your comments below if there are any corrections that need to be made so you can discuss them. Anyway, again, as I say, please like and subscribe uh, and comment below. I hope you have a good night, good day, or whatever you're having, and see you next time.